Does King Saul, a true believer on a, or an apostate? This really connected with this first question. So let us see. Uh, who, where did this question come from? Uh, from, uh, from America, from uh, one uh, lady, Guru is called. So she was asking this question and uh, here is, finally, that's where it's coming. <laughs> Thank you for, for, for the patience. This was on Facebook? Facebook, uh -huh. yeah. Uh-huh, because I think yes. you told me about something with King Saul. Yes. Okay, yes. King Saul, you guys remember King Saul. Who was the first king of Israel? Saul, really? I thought God was. God. It was theocracy. I thought God was. It was a what? Theocracy. Theocracy. But what was the problem? Uh, when the people got into the promised land, they said, uh, we, want a, we want a human king like all the other pagans have human kings. How about that one? So God, God was not good enough for them. Isn't that interesting, <laughs> huh? So King Saul was the first human king, right? And was he a true believer? Or was he an apostate? You guys understand what apostate is. Think of Judas. A person who professed belief in Christ, Judas, but never possessed it. Mm. And in the end, we saw he didn't truly possess saving faith because what he did. He, he, he committed what's called apostasy. He showed his true colors, right? So that's now the question of King Saul in the Old Testament. Was he a true believer or was he like Judas? Was he an apostate? Let's see. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter, let's go to 9, chapter 9. All right. Well, Samuel was a godly prophet whom God had sent to anoint Saul to be the first human king of Israel. Samuel, godly prophet. Saul, first human king. You understand the names? Okay, good. Here we go. Let's read what happened. Chapter 9, starting in verse 15. Now a day before Saul's coming... The Lord had revealed this to Samuel, that's the prophet, saying, About this time tomorrow I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin, and you shall anoint him to be prince or king over my people Israel, and he will deliver my people from the hand of the Philistines. For I have regarded my people because their cry has come to me. When Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said to him, Behold, the man of whom I spoke to you, this one shall rule over my people. Watch, watch, watch. Old Testament, we see that God would anoint certain people okay, to fulfill certain things God wanted fulfilled. God would anoint people with the Holy Spirit to do certain things for God. But listen very carefully. This anointing of the Holy Spirit did not necessarily mean regeneration, salvation. It simply meant empowerment to fulfill a purpose. For instance, do you guys remember the prophet Balaam? Remember the donkey had to rebuke Balaam? <laughs> okay, all right. The prophet Balaam, was he a true prophet of God or false prophet? False. False prophet, very clear. He led Israel into having immoral relations with the Mo he read, led Israel men to, 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 to having immoral relations with Moabite women. Balaam was a false prophet. He was in it for the wages of wickedness, the Bible says. False prophet. But did you know that the Lord did empower Balaam to speak truth to the pagan king Balak? Balaam wasn't saved. He had been empowered... For a moment, 
to speak truth from God. Make sense? So understanding that context, we see Saul now has been anointed, empowered to lead the nation of Israel. Make sense? Good. Well, let's find out what kind of king Saul was. Go to chapter 15. Start in verse 10. Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel, again, the good prophet, saying, I regret that I have made Saul king. Why, God? For Saul has turned back from following me and has not carried out my commands. What kind of king was Saul? Good king, bad king? Bad king. And Samuel, the good prophet, was distressed. And he cried out to the Lord all night. But guess what? Saul was done. Well, what do you mean, Andrew? How, how do you know that Saul was such a bad king? Let's keep reading. Verse 12, Samuel rose early in the morning to meet Saul. And it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set up a monument to God and worshiped God. No. What does himself. it say? Fuck himself. Podigal ye sebi spominik. Oh, they're going to love this in English. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not speaking in time. But... <coughs> he built a monument to himself. Uh, that would be called what? Idolatry. Idolatry. First commandment, second commandment. Just go through, right? Yeah. Was Saul worshiping God? No. Let's keep going. He built a monument to himself. And then he turned and proceeded down to Gilgal. Samuel came to Saul, and look what Saul said to him. Blessed are you of the Lord. I'm glad to see you, prophet Samuel. I've carried out the command of the Lord. Really? Then Samuel said, what then is this bleeding of the sheep in my ears? And the lowing of the oxen, which I hear. Stop, stop, stop. God had commanded Saul, go and destroy these pagans. Wipe them out. Okay? Amalek, Amalekites, wipe them out. Do not let anything survive, including the animals. This was God's judgment on the Amalekites. Amalekites, read way back in, in Exodus, how they tried to destroy God's people. God said, you're going down, Amalekites. God had commanded Saul to be the instrument to do that. God had empowered Saul to be able to do that. All of a sudden, Samuel shows up and says, um, Saul? What are these sounds of these animals I'm hearing? Weren't you supposed to wipe them all out? Let's keep going. Saul said, verse 15, Well, they, meaning the people of Israel, have brought them from the Amalekites. For the people spared the best of the sheep and oxen, to sacrifice to the Lord your God, but the rest we have utterly destroyed. Excuse me, um, Saul, you're lying. He blamed people. He blamed the people for not doing what God had commanded. Who was given the command? Saul. Saul. Who had the empowerment? Saul. Who was responsible? Saul. Saul took the best of the animals. You know what I'm going to tell you? We'll kill these bad animals that really aren't worth anything, but we're going to take the best for ourselves. And all of a sudden, Samuel shows up and says, uh, Saul, what's this noise I'm hearing in the animals? Oh, no, 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 Samuel, no, 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 no. Um, the people, they took them. Not me. And oh, by the way, we're going to sacrifice these to the Lord. <laughs> really? Jesus. Huh? Really? Then Samuel said to Saul, verse 16, wait, and let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. Uh-oh. Saul said, okay, speak. Samuel said, verse 17, is it not true? This is what God was saying through Samuel. 
Though you were little in your own eyes, talking about Saul, you were made the head of the tribes of Israel. And the Lord anointed you king over Israel. And the Lord sent you on a mission. And what was the mission? Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites. And fight against them until they are exterminated. That's how sinful these Amalekites were. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord, but rushed upon the spoil and did what was evil in the sight of the Lord? Then Saul said to Samuel, I did obey the voice of the Lord. Really, did you, Saul? By the way, you guys do understand? Part obedience is still disobedience. You do understand that, right? Just like being a little pregnant <laughs> is pregnant, <laughs> right? But look at what Saul says, verse 20, I did obey the voice of the Lord, and I went on a mission which the Lord had sent me, and I brought back Agag, the king of Amalek, and utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But look at this, but the people took some of the spoil, the sheep and the oxen, and the choices of things that were devoted to destruction, and they did it to sacrifice to the Lord, your God, at Gilgal. What kind of king was Saul, Dimitri? Look what Samuel said to him. Has the Lord as much delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. And to heed is better than the fat of ram. For rebellion is as the sin of divination, and insubordination is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, God has also rejected you from being king. But wait a second, verse 24. Then Saul said to Samuel, I've sinned. I've indeed transgressed the command of the Lord in your words. Wow, it sounds like he's really <laughs> repenting. Finish the sentence. Because I feared the people. Oh, do you see it? I feared the people. I, I thought you're supposed to fear the Lord. I thought you're supposed to repent before the Lord. I thought you're supposed to have a humble and trite, contrite heart before the Lord. He's like, well, I've sinned. I made a mistake, and yeah, I just want to look good in front of the people. Excuse me, is there any repentance here? And I listened to their voice. He says, now, therefore, please pardon my sin and return with me that I may worship the Lord. But Samuel said, I will not return with you, for you've rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you. Wow. And as Samuel turned to go, Saul seized the edge of his robe and it tore. So Samuel said to him, the Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it to your neighbor who is better than you. Who was the second king of, human king of Israel? David. David. Also, the glory of Israel will not lie or change his mind, for he's not a man that he should change his mind. Then here comes Saul. Watch this. He said, I've sinned. Sounds like he's repenting, right? <laughs> not quite. But please honor me now before the elders of my people <laughs> and before Israel and go back with me. You see that? He's repenting. One verse before that he, he was afraid of people. Now again, he's doing the same thing. He seeks honor from human beings. He's saying, Samuel, can you just come the back to me? Come back with me so I don't look so bad in front of the people. It's okay that the kingdom's torn from me, but at least let me look good before the elders. <laughs> what? What? It's like all of a sudden you, you, you're, 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 you're caught in sin. And you say, oh, yeah, I know I've sinned against God, but, but do me a favor. Don't tell anybody. Don't make me look bad. <laughs> reputation. Yeah. He wanted his reputation to don't be tarnished. But God 
Reputation? Do you he, see it? <laughs> he didn't care about God at all. <laughs> Do you see it? Yeah. And that's why in chapter 16, starting in verse 1, we read, Now the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul, since I've rejected him from being king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have selected a king for myself among his sons. What was this, one of the sons' names, the youngest name? David. David. And we look over in verse 12. So Samuel sent and brought him in. Talking about David, he was ruddy. He had beautiful eyes, handsome appearance. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil, anointed David in the midst of his brothers, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward, and Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Now watch this, verse 14. And the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Does that mean that Saul lost his salvation? Never had it. What does it mean that the Spirit of the Lord departed? The empowerment to lead Israel, departed. He was not able anymore, enable me. He was disabled. Because God had rejected him. And how do we know that? Hmm. Well, look what kind of spirit actually entered Saul. And an evil spirit of the Lord terrorized him. So much so that Saul's servants then said to him, Behold now, an evil spirit from the Lord is terrorizing you. We know that an evil spirit cannot live in a true believer, right? So was Saul a true believer? No. He had been empowered by God. He lost that empowerment. An evil spirit was sent by God to terrorize Saul. Does God do that to a believer who's truly saved? Does God send the Holy Spirit and an evil spirit living in the same house? No, no, no. So that tells you Saul wasn't saved, right? So Saul was not a true believer. He was an apostate. He built a statue for himself, <laughs> right? He um, disobeyed God, though he said, well, I partly obeyed. He blamed the people for his disobedience. He lied. Uh, what else did he do? Oh, when he repented... He didn't really repent to the Lord. He just... False repentance. Yeah, can, can you just protect my reputation? <laughs> Does that sound like a true believer? Well, wait a second, Andrew. Didn't David also make a mistake? I mean, David committed adultery and then tried to cover it up with murder. That's pretty bad. Oh, not about these kings. <laughs> 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 right? <laughs> you go, oh, you're right, right? <laughs> um, let's go to Psalm 51. Let's see David's response to his sin. Psalm 51. Now we know David did repent right away after he committed adultery and... Uh, yeah, one year he was hiding. Yeah. But what Many, is the difference? God didn't uh, let him. He sent the prophet Nathan. Many commentators believe that David for one year tried to hide his sin. Wow. But let's see what happened <laughs> when David was confronted by the prophet Nathan. God had sent Nathan to confront David about his sin. Let's see David's response versus Saul's response when he was confronted by Samuel. Mm. Psalm 51. Be gracious to me, O God according to your loving kindness, according to the greatness of your compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me against you. You only I have sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified when you speak and blameless when you judge. Little different than Saul's response. Mm. Samuel, can you make me look good in front of the elders? <laughs> Honor me in front of the people. You see the difference? 
Look at David's repentance. Verse 5, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. What is he talking about here? Sinful nature. Sin nature, you see it? Behold, verse 6, you desire truth in my innermost being, and in the hidden part you will make me know wisdom. Purify me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. This sounds like a guy who understood he messed up big time. Make me hear the joy, make me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. By the way, for a year, trying to cover his sin, as you said, God wouldn't let David go. And David felt like his bones because of the guilt he was carrying and the pain of his sin and the conviction by the Lord. He felt like his bones were breaking. You ever feel like that when you sin? And you haven't repented? That's the Holy Spirit in you saying, I'm not going to let you get away with this. You want to hold it? You don't want to confess it? Verse 9, hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence like you had done with Saul. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me like you had done from Saul. With Saul, right? Wasn't talking about losing salvation here. He remembered what God had done to Saul. And how do we know that? Verse 12, restore to me the joy of your what? Salvation. Salvation. Was David saved? Mm. Yes. Yes. Do you see it? Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will be converted to you. You see the difference between David and Saul? Deliver me from blood guiltness, O God, the God of my salvation. Then my tongue will joyfully sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips that I may declare your praise. For you do not delight in sacrifice, otherwise I would give it. Isn't that what Samuel had said to Saul? You're not pleased with burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. David was broken. Saul was a hypocrite. By your favor, do good to Zion. Build the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in righteous sacrifices, in burnt offering, in the whole burnt offering. Then young bulls will be offered on your altar. You see the difference between a hypocrite Saul and a true believer David. When Saul disobeyed, he looked for excuses and he tried to cover his reputation. When David sinned, he was a broken man. He agonized while he he tried to hide that sin. And when he repented, he repented with true godly repentance, which can only come by the Holy Spirit. Right? You see it? Someone who doesn't have the Holy Spirit in them, someone who isn't saved, their only repentance is to try to cover themselves. Only regret. It's regret. regret. But a true saved, truly saved person who has the Holy Spirit inside of them, their repentance is godly repentance. Against you I've sinned, against you only. Please forgive me that I may again praise your name, bring glory to your name. Do you see the difference? So, was King Saul a true believer or an apostate? Apostate. He was an apostate. Okay, 